I've been learning Spanish for quite some time now and I feel like for at least half of that time I've been stuck at this weird spot between intermediate and advanced levels. Last year I had this major, at least for me, milestone where I finally started listening to audiobooks in Spanish, which is not really something I had even tried before, but this year I've been feeling kind of stuck not really abandoning the language, but not really improving at it either. And by the way, if you have a language that you feel the same way about, please let me know in the comments below. Recently, I've decided to devise a plan that would allow me to potentially get my Spanish to more or less the same level as my English. And uh, mind you, I am not going to be trying to do all of the things that I'll be talking about in this video at once. I think I'll just start with a couple and then we'll switch between them but here are the areas that I want to work on and hopefully this will give you some ideas on what to do if you're also experiencing the intermediate plateau. So the first thing that I'll be trying to do is basically focusing less on the language itself and more on the culture. I am probably going to state the obvious, but I do think that this stage when you are between the intermediate and advanced levels is perfect for learning more about the culture. And when I say culture, I don't mean things like the capital of the country where the language is spoken or the highest mountain, the tallest building, national holidays, and other things that you might find in textbooks for beginners. Here, I mostly mean things like the nickname of the national soccer team or what kind of books everyone reads in elementary school and then remembers for the rest of their lives. What is the slang that young people use now and what is the slang than young people used 20 or 30 years ago. Music scene that is not limited to just the type of music I personally like. What everyone's, I don't know, favorite dog breed is and things like that. And I have a personal example to share here. So recently a friend here in the US started inviting me to trivia. And honestly, I used to think that I know quite a lot about US pop culture, but I was humbled really, really fast. Football team names, let alone players? No idea. <laughs> Famous radio shows? Nope. Music from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s even? Nada. So yeah, you can be as fluent as I am in English, which I think I am, but still lack a lot of knowledge about culture. And while there's still so much more for me to learn about US culture, I know even less about the countries that speak Spanish, especially since my experience has mostly been limited to Spain, Mexico, a little bit of Chile, and a little bit of Argentina. And to combat that, I've recently started using this app called Jive World, which also happens to be the sponsor of this video. What is Jive World, you might ask? If you're a Spanish learner, you probably have heard about this legendary, at this point, podcast called Radio Ambulante. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it in at least one of my videos before, but Jive World is basically an app that lets you interact with the stories from the podcast and learn Spanish through them in a way that is a little bit more intentional than just listening to the podcast episodes. Apart from listening to stories from over 20 different countries and exposing yourself to Spanish the way it's spoken in real life, you'll also be able to learn more about grammar, vocabulary, and culture through idiom to idiom translations and little cultural notes that you will find in the app. You'll also be able to take control of your learning experience by choosing to see or hide parts of the transcript or by regulating playback speed. But even if you don't necessarily have time to go through a full story, but you still want to keep learning, Jive World's sound bites might be just what you need. Sound bites are these mini lessons based on Jive World stories that introduce you to things like culture, history, accents, idioms, and so on. You will see later in this video that my plans for Spanish for the next few months are pretty ambitious. And so I think I myself will be actually sticking just to sound bites in order to not get too overwhelmed by everything I'll be trying to do for my Spanish. And if you also want to learn Spanish the way it's spoken in real life, go ahead and use the link in the description to download Jive World. Another thing that I would like to do is just switching things up. 
so here's the thing i also kind of think that the intermediate plateau is a lot of the times an issue of perception of how we perceive ourselves and our own skills and i also think that as language learners we often have those activities that we really enjoy in our target languages that help us practice a certain skill but maybe not so much other skills and so for example as someone who loves reading in my target languages i read in spanish way way more than i speak in spanish or write in spanish and so naturally i'm going to see incremental progress when it comes to reading because that's something i practice regularly but i think here's a catch when you do something often enough it kind of becomes harder to notice your progress in the same way as let's say we don't notice our own hair grow but then if we meet someone who hasn't seen us in a couple of months it will be much more obvious to them so you start feeling like even though you're putting in a lot of effort you can't really see any improvement and on the contrary when there's a certain skill that you don't usually work on all that much and then all of a sudden you're faced with a situation where you have to use that skill all of your deficiencies are going to be extremely extremely obvious to you so it feels like you're putting in a lot of work you're not really seeing a lot of improvement and yet there's still so many things that you do not know yet so i think a good idea here would be leaving that comfort zone and trying to work on a skill that you've been neglecting i know i definitely have been in the reading slash listening comfort zone for a bit too long and i think in the near future i would like to focus on writing a little bit more but as you know i'm also a big proponent of intentionally choosing the skills that you want to work on depending on what is relevant to you rather than trying to achieve fluency in all of the areas like speaking listening writing and reading so if you are comfortable with listening or reading but you don't really care to speak or write in the language I would suggest maybe thinking of ways to grow your skills by choosing more difficult books or listening to a podcast in a dialect that's new to you or something like that. Another principle that I strongly believe in is achieving fluency topic by topic. A common problem for intermediate learners is the lack of vocabulary. And it kind of makes sense. If you look at the vocabulary frequency graph, you'll be able to see that in the beginning of our learning process, we learn the most commonly used words that appear in speech or text again and again. But later, we kind of start encountering more and more words that are much more rare. So here's where I think the idea of reaching fluency by topic is really important. Again, I do consider myself to be a pretty advanced speaker of English, but there's definitely a lot of topics in English that I struggle with just because I haven't really been exposed to information about those specific topics in English. And the same works for Russian, which I'm a native speaker of. For example, back when I was writing my master's thesis, I was writing it in English and all of my research was in English too. And I remember having a really hard time trying to explain to my Russian friends and family what it is that I was writing about just because I was not familiar with the terminology in Russian at all. So what will I do about this with Spanish specifically? First, I'm going to pick three to five different topics that I would want to be able to talk about in Spanish and I will start consuming content on those topics. Because the thing is, let's take, for example, the word pantalla. Yes, it might not be the most commonly used word in all of the Spanish language. But if you read articles or watch videos on the topics of technology, it is very likely that you will be seeing or hearing that word again and again. So what I'm trying to say is that there are certain words that are not high frequency in general, but they are high frequency for a certain topic. And the more you expose yourself to that topic, the more chances you will have to learn that vocabulary now on to my favorite part participating in or creating a language challenge i think one of the reasons why being stuck at the intermediate level is so frustrating is because often we feel like there's no sense of direction or achievement anymore and sometimes you also don't know exactly what it is that you should be doing because maybe you've outgrown things like textbooks but you're not yet comfortable with native media and things like that and even when you are doing something you don't always feel the same sense of progress you did when you were at the beginner stage and here's where i think language challenges can be really really helpful 
example. What do I mean by a language challenge? It's basically doing something that is a little bit more intense than what you would normally do, but at the same time, it is also relatively short term and has either a start and an end date or alternatively a number of items you have to complete like a number of chapters for example or a number of hours you can always come up with your own challenge or you can join one of those challenges that people in different language learning communities all over the internet run throughout the year here are just some examples of challenges that you can find and participate in online so the 40 hour seven day challenge is basically a challenge where you try to treat language learning as a full-time job for a week there's also mini immersion weekend or no native language november where you try to only or mostly consume content in your target language for a weekend or for the whole month of november as the name suggests there's also polyglot nanorimo that's also coming in november where you just basically write in your target language daily there's also my favorite which is 100 days of a language any language that you want to choose. I personally like starting this on the 23rd of September, which basically marks exactly 100 days until the new year. But I'm making this video in October, so I guess you can't really do that anymore. But you can start anytime you want, and you also don't have to do 100 days specifically. It can be any number of days. I personally did 100 days of Polish last year, and you can still find my reports on Twitter under that same hashtag and this year i am doing something very similar but i'm not really making public reports i'm not tweeting about it i'm not making posts about it anywhere besides my patreon which i should have mentioned way early in this video if i even want to make any money with it anyways the challenge that i'm doing this year is called 99 days of reading where i basically have to read something in spanish every single day honestly i'm only on my third week i want to say but it's going pretty well so far and now finally let's look at my study plan and what exactly i'm planning to do and how often so for daily activities i will have sound bites those usually take me less than five minutes and i also have reading as a part of my 99 days of reading challenge but on a weekly basis i want to be refreshing some of the more advanced grammar using one of my textbooks i've already been doing it for a couple of weeks now and i want to continue doing one or two chapters per week and for writing and speaking i'm not really introducing those just yet because i don't really want to spread myself too thin and then burn out as a result but in november i might attempt the polyglot nanorimo challenge or maybe look for a tutor to practice conversation skills with if my financial situation allows me to do so. And then I guess the main challenge that I'm going to have to figure out is how to combine all of that with my Greek learning activities because that's not really something I'm willing to give up on just yet or hopefully ever. Anyway, this is the plan for now and I will give you guys an update on how it goes in one of my future videos, potentially in a vlog. If you yourself have experienced or overcome the intermediate plateau, please let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!